U.S. Water Rockets presents the 808 Car Keys Type No. 11 HD 720p Mini DV Camera Benchmark and Review. A short time ago, U.S. Water Rockets was offered the opportunity to review an HD version of the 808 Car Keys camera featured in our camera hacking tutorial series. We gladly agreed. However, we decided to take some extra time to come up with a set of repeatable benchmarks that we could use to compare this camera to other cameras we own, as well as to compare to cameras that we may review in the future. This video will explain our benchmarking process as we review the new camera. Let's begin. First, a little background information. At the time of the production of this video, the only way to purchase one of these cameras would be from a handful of sellers on eBay. To find one, search for the product by name and look specifically for parameters like 720p and H.264 in the description. The price is typically about $40 US and includes shipping. These cameras ship from China and can take a while to arrive. Inside the box, we found the camera, a USB cable, a car charger, a square of Velcro tape to mount the camera, a key ring, and of course a very skimpy manual. The controls and features of this camera are as follows. On the front of the camera is a lens hole and a microphone hole, and on the back of the camera is a hole to mount the key ring so you can put your keys on it and carry it in your pocket. More on that in a second. On the left hand side of the camera is the micro SD slot, and next to that, you'll find a reset button. Next to that is a USB jack. The top of the camera has two buttons on the back which don't do anything, they're just decorations. There's a hole for the status LED to be viewed, as well as the mode and shutter button. Now these buttons are really sensitive, so if you use them with the key ring and carry it in your pocket, you're going to push the buttons in your pocket and videotape your pocket. You don't want to do that. Okay, we can insert our micro SD card in the camera until it engages. To power up the camera, we press the mode button. The camera will power up in video recording mode by default, so when we press the shutter button, the status LED will blink three times rapidly to let us know that we're recording a video. Pressing the shutter button again will stop recording the video. If we press the mode switch at this point, we can change between video recording mode and still photo mode. Now every press of the shutter button will record one still photo. Pressing the mode button now will switch us back into video recording mode. Now we can record another video. If we press the mode switch and hold it in, we can shut the camera off at any time. The hardware specifications for the camera are as follows. The video resolution is 1280 by 720. The video codec is H.264 AVC1. The video file format is .mov. The video frame rate is 30 frames per second. The photo resolution is 5 megapixels, 2592 by 1944. The photo file format is JPEG. The memory slot is an SD, SDHC up to 32 gigabyte, class 4 or higher. The battery is lithium ion, 250 milliamp hour. There are two options for charging the battery in the camera. The first is to connect the camera to your computer using the USB cable provided. When connected, the red charging LED will illuminate if the battery is under charge. It will go out when the battery is fully charged. If you wish to copy files from the camera using your computer, you must have the camera powered up when you plug the USB cable in. The camera will now connect as a USB mass storage device and you can copy the files directly from the camera. The second option for charging the camera's battery is to use the car charger provided. The car charger has a unique capability in that when it's connected to the camera, you can still operate the camera, recording videos or taking photos, even while the battery is charging. 
This capability allows us to connect external power supplies to the camera, allowing it to run for extended periods of time. Now that we've described how to operate this camera, we're going to dive right into the testing and benchmarking. Our first benchmark is to test the physical specifications of the camera. The measured dimensions are length 2.01 inches by 1.28 inches by 0.55 inches, and the measured weight is 16.6 grams or 0.58 ounces. Our next benchmark is to analyze the output of the codec. We took the camera outside to record some video, and we were a little bit shocked. The camera has a date stamp in the lower corner of the screen. This is a problem for many of these types of cameras because the date stamp can't be turned off. We contacted our camera supplier to find out if there was a way to disable the timestamp in the videos. They soon sent us a firmware patch which was easily loaded into the camera and it removes the timestamp. See the description of this video for information on how to obtain this patch for your camera. Now that we have the timestamp issue resolved, we can move on to the codec analysis. Using VLC Media Player, we get the following report. H.264 MPEG-4 AVC-1 video codec, 7150 kilobits per second at 30 frames per second, zero drop duplicate or corrupt frames, 16-bit PCM monaural audio at 32 kilohertz. While analyzing the codec, we noticed another issue with the camera. If you look closely at the corners of the screen, you will see that the image is darker there. This means not enough light is reaching the corners of the image sensor, which is probably caused by a lens which is too small for the sensor. Our next test is designed to confirm the resolution of the camera. Many small cameras exaggerate their resolution specs by taking their VGA resolution video and stretching the pixel size to make a higher resolution in the output file. The result is a slight distortion of the video. An easy way to test for this distortion is to take a video of a perfectly circular object and examine the video output to see if the circles appear perfectly round. We tested the 808 car keys type number 11 camera to see if the pixels were square or if they were stretched using this method. Our testing has confirmed that the 1280 by 720 resolution is accurate. Our next test is a measurement of the rolling shutter effect of this camera. This effect can be summarized by the following explanation. Behind the lens of a typical digital video camera is an image sensor array made up of millions of tiny light sensors arranged in a grid. When a frame of video is recorded, it is not done all at once. It is actually done one row at a time. Each row is read and saved below the previous row, making up a single frame of video. This happens very fast, frame after frame, making a moving image when played back. The rolling shutter effect appears as a distortion in the separate frames caused by movement in the scene taking place as the rows are scanned. Let's see that one more time. Our benchmark for rolling shutter is actually quite simple. We merely recorded vertical objects 20 feet from a vehicle moving at 60 miles per hour and measured the angle they deviated from vertical in the video. Our benchmark shows a deviation of 4 degrees from true vertical. Keep in mind that objects moving faster will distort even more, so this effect must be considered when you are setting up a shot. Our next benchmark was designed to test the color reproduction of the camera. For this benchmark, we needed to have a standard light source to compare to. We chose to use sunlight near 12 noon on a clear day, and we recorded the intensity using a photographic light meter. A simple formula provided with the meter converts the reading to standard lux value. 
We also needed to find a standard color seam to use in our benchmark. So we chose to use a black cloth covered with a layer of readily available colorful candy for our seam. The standard seam created this way allows us to reproduce this test in the future with other cameras. This scene also has a dual purpose because it can also be used as fuel for the testing crew. To establish a color reference for comparison, we created a still photograph of the exact same scene using a Canon EOS 7D. We used that to compare to still frames from the Car Keys Type 11 camera. The results show that the Car Keys Type 11 color is quite washed out. Our next benchmarks test the lens of this camera. We photographed a stationary object from a fixed distance and looked for uneven focus near the edges of the screen. The focus did appear to be completely even. By measuring the width of the object in the field of view, we applied some basic trigonometry to determine the angle of view of this lens. Since we know that the width is 55 inches and the distance is 58 inches, we can determine that the field of view is 51 degrees. When collecting the footage for this test, we noticed a peculiarity with the video. The central area of the video appears to have a hot spot of different hue than the edges. The spot can be easily seen if the image is scaled smaller. Post-processing software can probably correct this problem, but it is definitely a drawback. Our next benchmark tests the battery life of the camera by timing how long it will record a video before the battery dies. We repeated this test several times and calculated the average results. Since temperature also affects battery life, we repeated the test at different temperatures. The recording time on full charge is 42 minutes average at 71 degrees Fahrenheit, 33 minutes average at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The camera will create a new file after every 20 minutes with a 4 to 6 second gap in between each saved file. And when the battery dies, the partial file is not saved. We were given a new firmware which corrects this problem and it saves the new file every 4 gigabytes and it properly saves partial files when the battery expires. So the maximum recording time of the camera with an external power supply and a 32 gigabyte memory card is 10 hours. Our next test benchmarks the performance of the camera in low light conditions. A camera with poor low light performance will usually generate very blurry video. This test was created to detect this blurring under repeatable conditions. To create a standard lighting for this test, we waited until just after sundown on a clear evening and measured the ambient lighting using the same method we used previously in the color test. We recorded a benchmark video for this test and as you can see, the blurring is quite extensive. The low light performance of this camera is very average. Since our primary use for these cameras is aerial photography from our high pressure water rockets, we came up with an acceleration benchmark to find out whether these cameras would survive the high G loading involved in these launches. We can calculate the G-loading the camera was subjected to from the onboard logging altimeter launched during the same flight. Looking at the first two seconds of the flight, we can calculate the average velocity, which is delta x over t, which is 475 feet in two seconds. That is 237.5 feet per second. The acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time, and since we started from a standstill, that becomes 237.5 feet per second divided by one second. That equals 237.5 feet per second squared. To convert this value to G, we divide it by 32 feet per second squared. That equals 237.5 feet per second squared divided by 32 feet per second squared. That equals 7.42 G. This camera easily survived 7.42G and it took some beautiful video in the process. Our final rating for this camera is going to be 4 stars. 
This camera has a few flaws that prevent us from giving it a full 5 star rating, but compared to its contemporaries, this is an absolutely wonderful camera for aerial photography. We highly recommend it. This concludes our video review of the 808 Car Keys Type Number 11 camera. We hope you found this video review useful. Be sure to check us out at uswaterrockets.com or come visit us at the Water Rocket Forum at waterrocketforum.com. Thanks for watching and subscribing. Until next time.